Hello everyone, welcome back to another vegan what I eat in a day and so to start off one day recently I made a raspberry breakfast bowl. I first blended up one frozen banana in my food processor with 200 millilitres of oat milk and two teaspoons of raspberry powder. I can't get fresh raspberries, you could use a handful of those if you have them but this works just as well. The colour is amazing though it dilutes with the creaminess of of the bananas and the milk when it blends up. I then just transferred that to a bowl and topped it with some Rude Health puffed brown rice, some goji berries and some raw cacao nibs. It's like a cereal smoothie bowl and of course you can top it with whatever you like. Grated chocolate, almonds, seeds, fresh berries, the more toppings the better in my opinion. For a mid-morning snack I made some sun-dried tomato cashew cheese stuffed cucumber rolls. I first peeled one cucumber using a vegetable peeler into eight strips. I then rolled them up and placed those on a dish. Then over in my food processor I blended up one cup of soaked cashew nuts, one small handful of sun-dried tomatoes, one chopped spring onion, one small handful of chopped olives, one small handful of basil leaves, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast, some black pepper and half a cup of water until it formed kind of like a paste or a cream cheese consistency. I filled each cucumber roll with the cashew cheese and that is how simple it is. This cheese is by far one of my favourite recipes yet. You can spread it onto crackers, have it in sandwiches, it's delicious for so many things and you can store any leftovers in the fridge in a container for up to five days. For lunch I made a pasta salad. I just cooked up one cup of whole wheat pasta and then I shredded up some romaine lettuce and quartered around 8 to 10 cherry tomatoes. Once the pasta was cooked I drained it and let it cool and then added it back to the pan with the chopped cherry tomatoes, half a cup of sweet corn and two tablespoons of the sun-dried tomato cashew cheese. I gave that a really good mix and then I placed a bed of the lettuce in a bowl, topped it with the pasta and then added on some fresh chopped dill. This is another great way to use the cashew cheese, it's so delicious with pasta and it's just a really easy lunch to take in a container on the go or to work or school with you. I also had that with a glass of lemon water which makes a nice change from regular water just to keep me nice and hydrated throughout the day. For an afternoon snack I had these Yushoi snack pea rice sticks with some wasabi avocado. I made the wasabi avocado dip by mashing up half an avocado in a bowl with half a teaspoon of wasabi and a squeeze of lemon juice and I just mix that into a dip. I then had that with these Ishoi rice sticks. These were the lightly salted ones. They're a green pea and rice baked snack. They're really delicious and they come in a few different flavours. They're high in fibre and a great source of protein. They're really great on their own as just a snack but I like dipping them into something and the avocado works great and I added a little bit of chilli on top to give it a bit of a kick too. I usually tend to go for something that has a bit more flavour though. These were the only ones that I could get my hands on but the other flavours are sweet chilli and lemon, smoked salt and Szechuan pepper and soy and balsamic vinegar which all sound amazing and I can't wait to try those next. For dinner I made a cheese, tomato and onion quiche with roasted new potatoes and an apple slaw. I first preheated my oven to 200 degrees celsius and then I made the base to my quiche using two cups of oat flour one and a half cups of chickpea flour, three tablespoons of dried herbs, one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, I seasoned it with salt and black pepper and then mixed that all together with half a cup of water until it forms a dough. You can add more water if necessary. I then greased my quiche tin with some coconut oil. I tipped my dough out and then I pressed it down evenly. I then popped that in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes to bake whilst I washed and half some new potatoes. And I placed those on a baking tray, drizzled them in a teaspoon of avocado oil and then seasoned seasoned them with some salt. I coated those well and then popped them in the oven and then removed my quiche base. To make the filling for the quiche I then grated up two courgettes, 
placed those in a sieve to squeeze out the excess water and left that to sit whilst I sliced up one white onion and one large tomato. I cooked down the onions in a pan with a little hot water and once they were soft I minced in three cloves of garlic and added in the grated courgette. Again once that had cooked down I added in one chia egg which is two tablespoons of chia seeds mixed with six tablespoons of water and seasoned it with some black pepper. I then added that onto the base, spread it out evenly and then laid over the tomato slices. I then sprinkled over four tablespoons spoons of nutritional yeast though you could do this the other way around and place the tomatoes on last and that went in the oven for around another 15 minutes. In that time I made the coleslaw by finally chopping up one green apple, two carrots and then I diced up half a red onion. I made the dressing by blending up the other half of the avocado from my afternoon snack, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, a tablespoon of lemon juice and a teaspoon of poppy seeds and you could make this even creamier by by using a whole avocado or even mixing in some vegan mayo. I added everything to a bowl along with some fresh chopped dill and mixed it all together really well. Then once the quiche and the potatoes were done, I served those up with the coleslaw on the side and then I just topped the quiche with some fresh shredded basil. I have another quiche recipe which I've made before, it's a roast vegetable version so I will link to that down below. I just love the oat flour base and I think that it just makes a really great lunch or dinner. You then also get two more quarter slices out of this or you could even divide it into eight slices to make it last longer but I would say it doesn't freeze that well and it's best eaten fresh within a few days. For dessert I made some chocolate and hazelnut coated banana pops. I simply peeled and cut one banana in half then I popped them on some skewers, placed them on a dish lined with baking paper, I then squeezed on some choc shot, spread it on evenly and then sprinkled over some chopped hazelnuts. I placed that in the freezer for 10 minutes for the chocolate to set before eating them and this is honestly so simple and delicious, it's great for a snack and for kids as well and if you have a nut allergy you could use shredded coconut or even something like freeze dried raspberries or strawberries would work so well too. And that is it for another day on my plate, I really hope you enjoyed this video as always all of the recipes and ingredients mentioned will be listed in the description box below thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye